Hey, everybody. I want to introduce you to Jessica Rhodes. She is the co-founder of Interview Connections. We have been in communication and friendly with each other for years now, and I'm just really excited to welcome you to the podcast. Thank you so much, Laura. I'm very excited. Yeah. So Margie was here a few years ago, and that was really, really fun to chat with her. And I want to talk to you not only about the business growth that you've experienced in the last few years, but some of the personal journey behind that business growth. Um, but first, before we even get into that, share with me a little bit about your journey growing Interview Connections, like some of the biggest moments that have been pivotal for you and where you are today. Yeah. So I founded Interview Connections in 2013 and I, I was just sharing this story. I've been sharing a lot more stories on, on social media recently because we're going into our last um, podcast guesting masterclass. And I was recalling back to when I first started booking podcast interviews, I was a virtual assistant for my dad, who's a business coach. And so that's kind of the, the genesis of Interview Connections was it was a family business. Essentially, I was working with my dad. I was booking him figuring everything out by Googling business podcasts for entrepreneurs. <laughs> and um, nobody else was doing that at the time. This was, I was actually just on with my uh, marketing agency and she's like, oh my gosh, look at this blog you wrote about the difference between podcasts and internet radio. And I was like, yeah, that was a big question in 2013. <laughs> So that was kind of the beginning is like really trailblazing into this industry of podcast booking, which was not an industry when I first started and, you know, continue to grow the business first as a virtual assistant into an actual business, then hiring 1099 contractors, and then deciding to transition the labor model into having full-time employees. And my business partner, Margie was actually my first full-time employee. She became co-owner in 2018 and she is now our CEO. So um, that's another thing we talk a lot about on our podcast and is just how, when you grow a business, sometimes the role you start out in is not the role that you're in a few years later. So I started out as founder and CEO, and now she is the CEO and I lead our sales and marketing team, which is a much better fit for me. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about my journey from a business perspective. Yeah. I mean, you've had tremendous success. I've, I've noticed some of the things you were sharing online in terms of like really going for that 500 K month recently and, and finally making it in your journey towards that goal. So you've had some great growth. There was probably a time where you probably couldn't even imagine like doing 500 K in a year, never yeah. mind in a month. So that's really exciting. And I, I just love your product so much. I know you've had people who have come onto this podcast that are part of your community and part of, part of, um, who you serve. And I just think it's, it's so genius how you do what you do. And, and we really appreciate everything that you, that you've done for the advanced community. And then also, um, you know, for those who have come onto the podcast, but you know, what's really interesting, I think about both you and Margie, is you speak really openly and authentically about some of the things that you've struggled with and your own journey and growing from a personal standpoint too. And so as a leader, you specialize in podcast guesting, but as a human, you recently decided to stop drinking. And that was something that you were sharing in social media. Mm -hmm. And I took notice of it because it was something I've been thinking about. Other people have been, I'm sure, thinking about in the last few years, I think people went in one of two directions. They either started drinking more or drinking less. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's, If you look at the research, most people have chosen to start drinking more. Yeah. Um, and the consumer research, but I think when, with the amount of stressors that we're under on a daily basis from leading teams and organizations, and also just being a mom, um, it is, I was very curious about that mm -hmm. decision. So yeah. what, what kind of led up to that choice? Yeah. So in, in about July of 2020, right. We're now like four or five months into the pandemic. Um, I realized how frequently I was drinking. It was like basically ending every day with a glass of wine or a beer on Saturday afternoon. It was like, okay, we can have some rosé in the afternoon. Like it was, it was like an everyday thing. And I remember hearing, um, our client, Jennifer love was talking. Um, we had her on a Facebook live stream and she was talking about her target audience and who she works with. And as she was describing her target audience, I was like, wow, she feels, I feel like she's describing me <laughs> like, and what I was like, that's me, that's me. And then she's like, and they drink alcohol to like numb their stress. And I was like, oh, 
Oh gosh. Okay. I think that's also me. <laughs> wasn't expecting that. You were like, I was just called out. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, yeah. Okay. Got it. And so that's what kind of started me, like started having me evaluate it because like everyone was drinking, like everyone was basically becoming an alcoholic. <laughs> like, COVID. I so I didn't really think about it. Right. Um, so that was one sign. And then we're, you know, on this aggressive path, we want to scale the eight figures. We were working for that $500,000 a month. And I remember asking, um, Kelly Roach, who I know you are partners with and who's our business coach. And I was like, Kelly, when you scaled to eight figures, did you find you were drinking less? And she was like, yeah, I actually don't like really drink alcohol that much at all. And I was like, okay, got it. So it's not part of the recipe for eight figure success here. Okay. Got it. And then I started, we started coaching with Chris Kenny on high ticket sales and he had recently stopped drinking. And so, you know, like God kind of brings you signs in a very condensed period of time to wake you up. And that's what happened to me. I got multiple signs right in a row. And I was like, all right, I hear you. I hear you. So, um, so I just decided to stop and it was really difficult. Like in the first couple of weeks, because it was such a habit, like what woke me up first was maybe like the day after, well, it was actually kind of handy because I got sick. I got like the flu or something. So there was like a few days where I wasn't drinking anyway. So then I was like, let's just not go back to it when I'm feeling better. So, but then I realized like I would finish working and it was like four 30 and I wouldn't even be thinking, but I just went to the fridge and I remember putting my hand on the fridge door going, what are you doing? Like, (laughs) and that's when I realized like, on the one hand, I was like, I've never identified as like an alcoholic, but I was like, I'm addicted. (laughs) Like I want this every day. And so it took a couple of weeks to really like break that habit. But I'm telling you nine days into not drinking alcohol, I felt so much more energy. Like it was, it was amazing. And it just got better from there. Yes. And you look amazing. I remember <laughs> looking at your photos and being like, oh my gosh, either you're getting some amazing injections or there's something else that you need to be sharing because you like your skin looks incredible. And I'm looking at you in this video, which many of you are listening to the podcast. And so what other health benefits have you found? Yeah. Uh, oh gosh. It's incredible. Like I look at before pictures. Like I remember I was looking at my husband and I went to Toronto for like a weekend getaway in 2019. And it's funny because the drinking, I hit my tipping point in 2020, but then the more I reflected, I was like, Oh, I've had sort of an up and down journey with alcohol throughout my twenties. I'm 34. Now I was like, this isn't a new thing for me. It just never came to a head where I needed to quit and actually read about that for a lot of women. It actually gets worse in your thirties and forties. So for me being 34, I was like, let's stop this train now before I become like an alcoholic mom at age you know, 40. So, but I look back on pictures. I remember we went to Toronto, um, for a weekend getaway and we were, we were drunk the entire time. We were like, we didn't have our kids. We were like going to breeze. I mean, we, on the one hand, I want to say we had an amazing time, but I look back and what I remember is like being drunk and arguing. And I'm like, Oh, and I like look back at pictures and I'm like, you look disgusting. <laughs> like I was bloated in my face. And again, like we had a great time. I don't want to make it sound like we were just fighting the whole time, but I remember us being, I look back on like dinners we had where we were kind of like butting heads and I'm like, yeah, because we were both drunk, like, you know, right. So yeah. So there's a lot more like peace. And my husband did not stop drinking. He watching me stop drinking. He became a lot more observant to his own drinking habits. So he's much more like moderate in his drinking. He's much more mindful about, I think it's really important. I don't think everyone needs to be sober by any stretch of the imagination, but I do think it's important to take note of why are you drinking? Are you drinking because you really enjoy the taste and you love, like I used to love craft brew, like craft breweries. I was a member of like wineries. That's great. But for me, I was drinking because I wanted to chill out and I could not handle my kids when I was sober. I was like, my God, I need a glass of wine. That is a sign that this is not like sustainable. So yeah, I've become, I, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I was, I was going to say, I think so many women struggle with that. Like, I think that so many moms, they call it like wine o'clock and mommy needs a glass of wine. And like, that's not, um, uncommon. 
right? And it's so normalized and socialized in our uh, environment and in our world that I think that it is so interesting. I think when somebody takes a different stance, right? Like yourself, that's kind of like, okay, like it was great. It was fine. But now like I'm leveling up. Right. And that's really what I hear you saying. So what did you, what are some other ways, like in terms of brain firing and ideas and leadership, like how is that showing up for you? Yeah. So yeah. And I, I'm, I'm very passionate about this because like mommy wine culture is so prevalent. Like it's actually, it's yeah, that's like a whole other thing, but it is, it's become so like normalized that moms have to drink to like get through parenting. But so anyway, there, that I could talk for hours on that, but I so much more like clarity in my mind. Um, I felt like immediately I had more time in my day because I wasn't like tired and ready to like go to sleep right after I put my kids to bed. Um, so I literally like got time back in my day because I wasn't like just having a couple glasses of wine and falling asleep. Um, So that was one thing. And just like having just so much more clarity, having, um, being able to actually feel all of my feelings and emotions and kind of because I'm able, I'm more present and able to feel what I'm feeling. I have my finger on the pulse of where I'm at, you know, like, am I having a high vibe day or a really low vibe day? And what do I need to do about that? Like, maybe let's go to meditation and exercise and a glass of wine. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. So I got sick with COVID earlier this year, like many people who are probably listening Yeah, and couldn't drink. You could barely tolerate food, you know, like regular food. And I never picked it back up afterwards, which was so interesting. I thought of you and I thought of other people that didn't, it's not necessarily, I think that anybody needs to label themselves in any particular way. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think what is contributing to over drinking is such a personal kind of place, right? It's that personal line for me, just much like most moms, right? I found myself saying, Oh, you know, five o'clock. All right, great. You know, and pouring a glass of wine while you're making dinner. Um, or you're feeling like that stress rising up from kids business. I think so many people experience that. And during the pandemic, you're home anyways, you don't need to wake up the next day and go anywhere. It was so normal for everybody to reach for a glass of wine. But when I finally caught COVID and, and kind of lost the taste for it, I never added it back in. Well, it was so mm-hmm. interesting. Last Sunday night, it was Easter at the time mm-hmm. of this recording. And I had a glass of white wine for like the first time pretty much all year. And I'm an avid tennis player. So the next morning at 630, I was out playing tennis. I was missing every shot. I couldn't Ugh. believe it. Like I couldn't believe how much. And I turned to the pro and I said, and I play at a pretty competitive level. So the balls are coming at you real fast. You're at the net. It's your reaction time is so important. Right. And I turned to him and I said, Oh, I just had a glass of wine last night. And he's like one glass. And that bothered you. And I was like, I think it did. Like, I think I really think it affects our reaction time, our cognitive mm-hmm. functioning probably more than we even realize. Yeah. I am, I'm not a brain scientist, but I remember learning a lot about like the, how it affects your prefrontal cortex. Pretty sure I'm using the right words there, but there is, is when I first stopped drinking, I got like really into it. Like I wanted to read a lot of books about sobriety and just like really understand, like I kind of get obsessive about something when I first get into it. And I just like reading about the impact that alcohol has on the brain. I'm like, Oh my God, like this is literally poison. And I'm so glad that you share that story because, you know, I'm now what August, 2020 year and a half, almost two years into this. And sometimes I'm like, well, like, could I have a glass of wine every now and then? And I remind myself, I'll probably feel like crap the next day. Like I actually, my tolerance is so low that I probably won't even enjoy it. So, you know, for me, it's just so much easier to cut it out altogether than to attempt to moderate it. Yeah. So interesting. And I love that you're sharing the story. And I know that you really encourage people to share their stories authentically as part of their platform, as part of their personal brand or expert brand. And so what are some of the things that you think are going to change about podcasting, kind of bringing it back to podcasting and sharing authentically in terms of looking into the future, what are some of the things that people need to be thinking about or doing differently when it comes to actually podcasting or speaking in general? 
Yeah. I mean, people are craving the authenticity. Um, it's so important. I've been, I mean, really over the past week have been sharing so much more and it wasn't until I started sharing a lot more that I realized how much I wasn't sharing before. And like, this is what I talk about. Like, this is my expertise. This is what I help people do. But I realized I have been holding back because when you share authentically and when you're being fully self-expressed with your story, like you're going to get a lot of support, a lot of approval, a lot of validation, but there are going to be people that are not into what you're sharing. And just like tying this back to, you know, sobriety, like there are people that are like, you shouldn't call yourself sober. Like that's not, and stuff like that is like massively triggering. And it really throws you into a tailspin to kind of question everything, but it is actually through those moments of somebody questioning your story and challenging it, that you actually become so much more clear in your intention and why you're sharing it. So I'm actually grateful for the moments where people have questioned me on that because I learned so much more about myself in the process. So people are craving that authenticity and that is where I see podcasts and going. That's literally where we're going with our podcast. You know, it's called monetize the mic, but Margie and I were just saying, I think maybe we need to rename the show because people are really like the little bit that we've shared so far. They're like, I want to hear more about these deeper topics and about our partnership and about like how we're growing. Um, so that's where I see like listeners become such raving fans is when they, they are hearing the deep real stories that people have to share. Mm, so, so good. And just as we kind of wrap up and, and talk um, a little bit more about where people can get in touch with you, is there anything else that you wanted to share that you haven't shared about your personal journey by going sober or going dry or whatever people want to call it for themselves, right? Yeah. I would just encourage everyone to like question each day, like, what are your values? Where are you going? And what are you doing right now? What are you consuming? What are you doing? Who are you talking to? Whatever it is that's in the way of that. Because ultimately I stopped drinking because it was a big roadblock from me getting to where I want to go in every area of my life. So look at all aspects of your life. Look at where you want to go and question if, if it's helping you get there or if it's holding you back. Such good advice. And so if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to connect? Yeah. So our website is interviewconnections.com. So that's where you can go if you are interested in reaching out and learning about our services. If you want to connect with me personally, I'm on Instagram at Jess Rhodes, R-H-O-D-E-S four five. Um, and that's where I just post personally. So if you liked my personal story here, you can come connect with me on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks, Laura.